Uh, first of all, for tires, uh, for flats, I should say, go tubeless if you can. Uh, carry pre-threaded tire plugs and a boot patch. And what I mean by pre-threaded pre-threaded tire plugs, you can use something like a Dyna plug, and then you can already put the little plug or the side of bacon, as some people call them. You can put that in there, so then it's ready to go. It's a pain. You know how adrenaline filled you are and everything else. And when you get a flat and you're frustrated, last thing you want to do is carefully thread the needle. You know, yeah. it's something that doesn't mm-hmm. really want to fit. And I don't really ever see these for road people, but I, mountain bikers do it. But I've never seen a roadie with them. Maybe they're hidden That's somewhere. It. Yeah. But they're the sh- same concept. You should yeah, still have it. And then I'd always carry a, a boot patch as well. And what that is, you can actually buy boot patches. Uh, you can use a wrapper for sure or a dollar bill or whatever mm-hmm. else. Um, but you can buy a boot patch. Uh, if you look up, I think Genuine Innovations may make them. But if you just ask your bike shop or you look on any any bike website, you can look up uh, tire boot patch. And a lot of the time they'll have, it's like basically thick rubber and it's got adhesive on one side. So what is a boot patch for? So let's say that you get a hole that's bigger that is not sealant, can't seal. In that case, you would want to plug it, right, with a tire plug. But sometimes a tire plug isn't even enough. This is common in like a sidewall tear. So if you rode up against the side of a rock on a mountain bike or you hit glass on your road bike and it kind of slashed it in a big way, in that respect, you actually want to patch the tire from the inside. So you have to clean the tire off, make sure that there's no like, you know, a sealant or anything else on there. So you just rub it with your hand, your glove, some type of cloth, and then stick that on there. Um, and with that, then do you put a tube in or? You could, or if you have sealant with you and it hasn't leaked out, you could put sealant in, then reinflate it if you want. But I'd recommend at that point yeah. using a tube. Uh, if you're not tubeless, carry, and, and even also if you're tubeless, carry a tire level, tire lever for sure. Sometimes two. Yeah, two, it can yeah, be a good depending. idea. If you haven't experienced how tightly your tire fits your wheel, your mm-hmm. rim, yeah. you should, some are hard. If you get a flat and you have are having a hard time getting the tire back on, take a step back or off and put the bead, both beads, so both sides of the tire, the bead is the part, that, the thicker part that actually makes contact with the rim, put that into the center channel of the rim. If you do that first, it's gonna be very easy to pull it off or put it on. Uh, the reason for that is because the tire is not stretched out, so it's gonna be a whole lot easier to put yes. it on. And then I carry two CO2s. I don't like carrying one big CO2. And the reason for that is because if I use that CO2 and I have a slow leak and then I need to refill it, it could constantly be slightly like slowly leaking that CO2 out of my nozzle. And I'd rather have, if I'm trying to get one big one because I need all that volume, I'd rather have two. So then I can use up one and then still have a mountain or road for both. Uh, One thing with the rear too, that I see a lot of people do when they get mechanicals is they don't shift their bike down to the smallest cog first. And then that causes a whole host of, you know, frustrations trying to get your rear wheel off. Also, if you have disc brakes, do not touch your rear brake. And be careful if you put your bike upside down, which I'm okay with putting your bike upside down. As long as you do it carefully, it's just fine. Some people really hate it. But uh, if you do put your bike upside down and you have disc brakes, make sure you don't have some disc brakes like the top of the lever. If you put your bike upside down, it might depress that lever Mm -hmm. a bit. If you do that, then your pads are going to close and you won't be able to get your rotor in. That's a pain. Um, so two tips on that. Take your bottles out before you flip your bike over. <laughs> yeah. You guys ever done that? Where you flip it over? Close them, yeah. And then they go drip, 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 drip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the other one is uh, if you do hit your brakes and your your caliper does Business freeze, problem. use your uh, tire lever, scoot it in there, and you can pry it open. The other thing I would say is when you get a flat, make sure you find a mark where the flat is. Whether that's just, you know, licking oh, your finger yeah. and marking it like that, because that's a common thing is well, yeah. if flat, then you don't even look where it's coming from. If you have tubeless, keep rolling if you get a puncture, um, but monitor if the sealant leak is subsiding. If it isn't subsiding and it's just, and everyone behind you is covered in sealant and so is your back <laughs> and it's not slowing down, then pull over and, and fix the situation like what we talked about earlier. Give it a second though. Yeah, uh, but give it a second because sometimes you need to ride to get street sealant to circulate around there yeah. to have a chance to seal. I also do, if, if, if I'm going slow or something like that, I make sure that the hole is on the bottom Mm-hmm. If you're stopped, because if the hole's on the top, oh, sure. there's no sealant that's going to like catch in there. Yeah. So your best chance is if the hole's on the bottom, and then it will just drain and pour in there. Well, and sometimes what it needs is put it on the bottom, then flip it up to the top, because it, it needs to get sealant on there. And then if it doesn't have a whole sea of sealant, so to speak, above it, then at that point, a lot of the time it can dry out and seal. But if you if it's just bathed in sealant itself, a lot of the mm. time it's harder for it to dry. So maybe spin it fast. Spin it and then let it sit and then try all four quadrants, right? Like if it seals here, if it seals here, yeah. just give it a shot. You know, don't just let it sit in one spot and hope it hope it fixes itself. On drop chains, because that's a common one. If you are if you have more than one chain ring up front, <coughs> like you're on a road bike or anything else like that, the one thing try shifting before you just go. Oh no, my chain's off. 